Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being with me. Sorry we were a little late with our midday prayer time. Um, I had a few errands I needed to do, and so um, I'm glad to be with you here now. Um, it is a gorgeous day here in Midcoast, Maine. I am Pastor Shelley Wiley, People's United Methodist Church in South Thomaston, uh, John Street United Methodist Church in Camden, and the Finnish Congregationalist Church, Route 131 in South Thomaston. Let's begin. at my house on my deck it is such a beautiful day so if the uh the the shadows and stuff are a little um a little off-putting i'm sorry about that uh but it's just too nice a day to be inside i'm going to read from the prayer that was written for today from the united methodist conference new england conference and um i invite you to be in a spirit of prayer It was Monday when he returned to the friends we get to know by name, Mary, Martha, Lazarus. It was Monday when he walked the few miles to a familiar home away from home, one kneeling at his feet, one preparing the meal, one living the miracle. It was Monday when the city was filling up with pilgrims for the Passover, with crowds who had heard about the resurrection, with threats on Jesus' life. And so it was Monday when Mary brought things with her as she knelt near Jesus, costly perfume, her own hair, a blessing. She gave her gift early in the moment we don't know why. She gave in life that which was intended for death. She made do with what she had on hand and it was enough. It was enough for an anointing. It is Monday again, holy God, anointed one, and the cities are emptying out. Pilgrimages are canceled crowds are dangerous and forbidden there's a threat on everyone's life it is monday again holy god anointed one and the day is strange for us we kneel and pray for a miracle for people we know and people we will never know we go about our daily chores in the kitchen remembering the poor we live behind masks that are like, sorry about that, that are like the clothes covering Lazarus' face as he was called out of the tomb. Excuse me. Being outdoors. And it is Monday again, holy God, anointed one. 
and it is difficult to get past Sunday's cry of Hosanna, save us. We want to breathe deeply and to be healthy and together again. We want to be called out of the tomb by name and set free, a miracle from you. We want to skip right to Easter. But it is only Monday, Holy God, Anointed One, the day you share with us Mary and her blessing given early in the moment. We do, not know, we do not need to know why. We just need to know that the time to give is now, rather than waiting until it is too late. We just need to know that what we have on hand and who we are is simply enough. These are enough. We are enough for your anointing. Let it be so. Amen and amen. So another reason I wanted to come outside this day is it is just so glorious here in the mid coast. Um, we're almost at 60 degrees and I've been talking over the last few days about going out and finding the places where things are greening up for us. And um, I've been doing a little yard work. And so I kind of wanted to to show you um, what I'm so thrilled about. Um, here's, here's my first flowers for the season. Right there. You see them? They're coming through. In this crisis time, in this dark time, in this time when we're truly not sure of whether everything we're doing is going to be enough to get us through. There are the promises. There are the flowers. They have come through their long winter of being down under and appearing to be dead, sheltered in the darkness, alone and unheard of and unknown and unseen. And yet they burst forth life now. Now in this time, they come forth. And the grass is greening and the air is warm and the sun is shining. And just like that, we will be shining forth too. And we will be coming again into a new life, a new place of being, a new sense of hope, a new sense of opportunity. And so while I was reading and wanted to share with you today a little bit about this newness of life and this hope and opportunity when I was reading through my journals that I frequently read online um, Cameron Trimble of the progressive church movement had what I think is a beautiful a beautiful thought to ponder and so I'm going to read her post to you today if you aren't subscribed to her site she um she's on uh, Cameron at convergenceus.org and for those of you who uh, are on the church Facebook page, I have posted her, uh, her reading for this day. And so you can find her website um, and her piloting faith. So um, go ahead. And she writes, where do you go when you can't go out? The only place left is to go in. Does it feel like we are on the cusp either of a new awakening or a de-evolution de de into chaos. Perhaps we are on the edge of creating a new world or we are on the edge of losing our world. The word we use over and over to describe our experiences is crisis. We are facing the COVID-19 crisis we have a global health crisis. We are in an economic crisis. It's crisis. The word crisis comes from the Latinized form of the Greek word karios or crisis. It means turning point. We have come to a turning point, a time of making critical decisions. Today, we live in a world dealing with political crisis and on the scale of the Nixonian era or even beyond. 
We have created an ecological crisis through global warming. We now face a global health and economic crisis with this coronavirus. But unlike times in the past, we are trying to deal with all of these three at the same time. We are indeed in crisis of a great turning that has, if only for a moment, commanded us all into a contemplative life. We are bound to our homes, invited into solitude. We are required to socially distance and shrink our world to the immediacy around us. Everything is slowing down as we try to slow down the spread of this virus. The engines of the world are grinding to a halt. And then from crucifixion comes resurrection, new life, the great turning point. The world we had is now revealing its weaknesses. We are living lives that are unsustainable. We were living in fear and suffering, but in the face of crisis, we are watching pollution clear from our cities. We are looking towards our neighbors and finding help and compassion. We are turning in empathy and in love. I believe we are in a deep awakening, a turning point. We are making a new world, even as we try to desperately restart the world in which we came. Perhaps, perhaps, sit with that possibility that a new world is becoming and it is coming in you and through you and in me. It is a, a time of turning, of newness of life. The quote that um, was on Facebook quite a bit over the last week and a half or so was the idea that um, you know, we, when this coronavirus is all over, that maybe we will return to normalcy. And the question before us is, and so what will you bring from your old normal back into the new normal? And what should we be letting go of and not bring into our new normal? A wonderful question to ask. What will be your new normal? We are at a turning point, each and every one of us. A great turning point. A no better time to be turning than during Holy Week. To ponder that which we shall allow to lay dormant in the ground. And that which we shall bring forth and rise up in a new, blessed, resurrected life. It is a time of hope and promise. May God be with all of us in this time. Oh, holy and awesome God, we are grateful for this time. We are grateful for this time to reflect and to turn our lives around. May this sense of hope that comes from the warming of spring move us into a place of seeing your hope and purpose and grace in the coming of days. Be with those who are working to abate this crisis of the virus, keep them healthy and well. God bless those who have kept our country and the world running, all of the workers who are deemed essential. Keep them healthy and well and moving forward. Let them know how much we appreciate them. And for those who doubt that this is truly a problem and for those who are refusing to keep themselves distant from one another. I pray for a turning of their minds and a turning of their hearts to begin to realize that their very life and presence can bring death to another. May they start thinking beyond themselves. May empathy pour into them that they can once again be a part of the healing and the hope in this world. I pray this and so many more things, O oh God, in the name of our precious Lord Jesus Christ, who unites us all with his prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen, my friends. If you're in a place where it's as beautiful out as it is where I'm sitting right now on my front porch, may you get out and breathe in this spring air. Remember to call a friend, call a family member, check in with each other, and later tonight have that cup of tea or that, that nice warm drink and be grateful and give thanks for the Lord above. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow. Amen.